Oh hey, it's Wes. And for today's video, we're gonna have to go wide. Because we're going big. We're gonna talk about how we can get the most effective and cheapest outdoor portraiture setup. Now right now, it is currently minus 20 degrees Celsius outside. So we're going to do the technical demonstration side of this inside. Now I have my portrait camera here set up at f6.3. Nope, it's f11. So that when I take a picture, we're not gonna see anything at all. So first of all, our first lesson in trying to get these flashes to do our best for us is we need to control our light. There are a few ways we can go about this. Number one, the most important aspect is to keep your camera within its sync speed. Now, what does that mean? Well, we don't want to use what's called high-speed sync. And depending on your camera body, that might kick in somewhere between 1 1 60th of a second and 1 2 50th of a second. All the way up to on the A1, like 1 400th of a second. So you need to stay below that because once you go into high-speed sync, you lose a lot of flash power. At the low end of high-speed sync, we're losing about half your power. Up toward the high end at about 1 8,000th of a second, you're losing about two-thirds of your flash power. So that's something we don't want to lose. And if we're going to get this job done without spending money on a big expensive flash, like an 8600 or an 8400, we're going to have to get the most that we can out of these. So first of all, got to stay in that sync speed. But how do we do that? It's going to be too bright, especially outdoors. Well, there are a couple ways of achieving this. Number one, you can do what I did on this camera here and go all the way down to like F11. Obviously, you want to use your base ISO, whether that's 100 or 64. The next thing you can do is get an ND filter. Now, a quality variable ND filter can be quite expensive, hundreds of dollars. But what I would suggest is get a half decent quality fixed ND filter, or possibly a few of them. Now, you're going to have to do some math on exactly what level of ND you're going to need. But in broad daylight, you're looking at about an ND64, and in medium, not quite evening, but late afternoon, late morning sunlight, you're gonna need about an ND32. And then by the time you're pushing towards sunset, you're either not going to need an ND at all, or just an ND8. Well, why is that? At midday, we have tremendously more light than we do toward the end or beginning of the day. And we have to balance for that. We don't want our exposure to be all that person or a blown out background, we need it to be balanced. So I can't tell you exactly which ND you're going to need because it's going to depend on two things. One, how bright it is outside and two, what aperture you prefer to shoot at. Now, I would like to shoot at like f1.4, f1.8 because I'm a prime shooter, I usually use my 85 millimeter. If you're shooting with a 70 to 200, this actually is less difficult because you're already at f2.8 at your widest aperture, so you're gonna to need to cut the light down even less. So that's something you're gonna to have to sort out on your own, unfortunately. All right, so once we have that ND filter on, now we have to decide how we're going to diffuse our light. We're not just gonna fire the flash at the subject, we're trying to get some flattering light here. So what I have set up here is a pretty typical three to four foot double diffused softbox. And while these give great light, my flash is set to one half power because I'm just using the TT685 Mark II. It's just a battery powered, AA powered flash, doesn't have tremendous recycle time. And so anything beyond one half power, it gets real slow. So there we go. We have a medium amount of light coming out of this, but I think we can get more. Now, one thing that we could do is pull the diffusion fabric out of this but then we would end up with a very hot spot right in the middle of our flash unit. And that's not really what we're going for here. So my suggestion is something a little unorthodox. I'm going to use an umbrella instead. Let's do this. I have my flash mounted in the Godox S2 bracket. You can mount this however you want, but the S2 bracket's convenient for being able to mount bone softboxes as well as umbrellas. 
Now a good quality, big double diffuse softbox can cost you a pretty penny. Some people pay well over $100, some people pay three, four, five hundred dollars for one. This is a Westcott umbrella, seven foot umbrella. This thing will run you about a hundred bucks without the diffusion layer. You will have to remember to move your umbrella a little closer to your subject because our surface of light is technically a little bit further away here. So let's fire this. There we go. So we have about the same amount of light, but it's wider. But why am I using this ridiculous umbrella? Well, I will tell you. Although we currently have about the same amount of light being produced by the flash, what we can get with the umbrella is a reflector effect. This is a huge white surface. And so if you face your talent away from the sun and then face the umbrella toward them like you normally would for a photo shoot, all of a sudden you're going to be doubling your light output. So even without the flash, it's reflecting. You add the flash, you're increasing it further still so that all of a sudden you're getting more for your money. Now let's go one step further here. Let's take this up to expert level. All right, I've set up another light stand, which might seem kind of crazy on the face of it. The interesting thing about speed lights is you can focus them. So currently I'm on the widest setting so that I can fill my umbrella, but I'm going to move it away from the umbrella now and I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to zoom to 50 millimeters. Now how you decide what you zoom this to is actually not terribly difficult. I'm not being super precise with it today, but if you take the camera that you're photographing with and you stand where your flash is going to be with the focal length that you're using, let's say you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, you're going to get a pretty good idea of what focal length you should probably have that flash at because that zoom is specifically designed to cover a frame depending on your focal length. So if you're shooting with a nifty 50 and your light modifier mostly fills your frame, then you're zooming to 50 millimeters. If it's smaller than that, then zoom into maybe 75. If it's bigger than that, maybe 35. Now this particular effect isn't going to work fantastically on me as a human being because I am now incorporating the flash as its own hair light. But the problem is I don't have any hair. So what this gives us is a new effect of having two lights. Now, if you really want to bump this up a notch, you can use a silver umbrella. And in that case, you'll get a much more balanced effect, but a silvered umbrella is a little less flattering. But what we have designed here, and again, my face would be more lit if I was doing this outside, but it is way too cold. We can combine the reflection of the sun with the exposure of the flash that's actually coming from behind us to light the back of our subject Normally I would have it a little further away. Then reflecting off of our seven foot umbrella to light up our subject in a more dynamic way. So we're using just a cheap 100 or less dollar flash here with a $100 light modifier to create a two light outdoor setup that can be used in much of the day. Now this is going to fall down getting pretty close to noon time in a lot of areas, but just after that and just before that, I find that as long as you're using an ND filter that cuts just the right amount of light, and as long as you can get the umbrella to also work as a reflector, combining the two together, you can get a fantastic effect as you've seen in the image samples in this video. Let me know if you have any suggestions for budget flash photography down in the comments below, if you have any comments on what we did here. But until next time, let's go take some photos.